I found a story here in a local newspaper about somebody that I'd like to meet. But I just need a bit of help here. What does it say about this person here? Can you just read that out to me? Oh, this person is courageous, inspirational and selfless. Oh, they sound nice. I wonder who that can be. Let's have a look. Oh! Oh, hang on a minute. It's you. Good night, Grabby. Come and join me and bring Jim with you. Come and join me. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Gabby, it's best to say you are a bit shocked to be here tonight, aren't you? Yes, <laughs> indeed. Just a bit. Well, I can tell you that you are here because of Jim. Isn't that right, Jim? Yeah, I think so, Rally. Sorry about that. <laughs> tell us why. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers it, but back last winter uh, in Somerset, Boroughbridge, where we were from and surrounding areas, we had some pretty poor flooding. The um, it, was, it was real, real bad. We were in a bit of a disaster zone. We were in a local pub in, in Boroughbridge there. The phone was red hot. I know, put the phone up, chap on the end. I've seen you on the telly. I want to come and help you. I thought, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, he said, what can I do to help you? And I said, look, we're in a world of trouble. Bring me some hand sanitizer. No worries, mate. Be there in the morning. Put a pallet of sanitizer. Right, so off I go. Didn't think any more about it. Anyway, in the morning, Sally said, but, oh, Jim, you better look out the window. But what you've done, there's an army of people outside. Well, when the village of Borough Bridge was hit by the floods, little did they know the cavalry was on their way. The further warnings enforced to severe flood warnings, the highest level from the environment agency for the risk of flooding that is set to continue throughout the next three days. It was raining and raining, the river was higher and higher. And I said to Sally, I said, this is going to be the biggest flood we've seen here. Parts of southern England have seen the winter. Once again, the clock is ticking as river levels rise. I've been here for 33 years, and we've never seen anything like it. Under water and under pressure, the pumps are working almost 24 hours. Doing all they can to defend their homes in their darkest hour. Very scary, frightening. We were just petrified we were going to lose everything that we worked for. We realised that we were in trouble. We were desperate for help. I first seen him, I went down walking along the river bank to do the horses one morning. I, I truly thought they were tourists. It was like they got dropped in from somewhere, wasn't it? It was just all these men. They had enormous smiles on their faces and they simply said, we've come to help. They obviously had a great deal of knowledge and their leader was absolutely extraordinary. He's called Ravi and he just turned out to be a great guy. One of the most remarkable people I have ever met. The local authorities, I think, were doing as they could see their best but they didn't really understand the sheer scale of the problem. It was a genuine disaster. I'm not a person who actually ha asked for help ever. I always work on my own. This time I got to the stage where I was begging for help. The pickup truck turned up outside. The chap got out and said, well, we're here to help. What do you want us to do? Ravi laid the sandbags about two metres away from the house. So he probably would have come in house without the sandbags being laid. But as it was, they kept her away. He was straight and stuck in helping to move some vehicles, moving debris, taking food out to people, clothing and blankets. They laid all the path along the back of the river right here, they put all the wood chip down. You know, they were just constantly on the go from morning to night, weren't they? With Ravi's organisation, it's just done. The local authority couldn't get us any more sand, so Ravi just got his credit card out and bought 20 tonnes of sand. Job done. They visited practically every single property that had a problem. They have just worked and worked and worked, and they never, never stopped. Without the help of Ravi, without a doubt, we would have, we would have gone under. He saw a serious problem and a community in need, and that's all he needed. He just sees where the help needs to be put, and he puts the help where it should go. I'd like to say to Ravi a very big thank you. He helped us. Ravi was there for us, thank goodness. <laughs> to actually come down to Somerset and to engage with the people, help the people. I Just a huge thank you. I don't think we would have probably got through it without their help and their commitment, what they've done to the whole village, and everybody's grateful. So thank you, Ravi. Ravi needs to know that you know, he's a superb person, and the whole of community of Borough Bridge and surrounding areas are indebted to him. I've never met anybody quite like Ravi before, ever. I mean, he's a true hero. <laughs> You're crazy. I didn't know you were checking me out. <laughs> Danny, did you have any 
idea of the huge impact you had on the people of Boroughbridge. I went for one day. I remember the day very clearly. And I stayed a week. Uh, there's so much to do. And I've come very close to the people of Somerset. I'm a man of action. I don't do meetings. Mm -hmm. I don't sit around tables. I see what needs doing and I do it. And uh, with Borough Bridge, it's become very special. 15 years around the world uh, doing relief work. And suddenly I find this huge, massive heart mm. you know, full of love in Somerset, not far away from where we're based in Slough. Jim, this is quite unusual, isn't it, for somebody from a different town to just bowl on up and um, help? Like I said, like I said, I've never met anybody like it before. I mean, this guy is he's genuine. He's not, he's not a stranger in our village anymore. No, no <laughs> absolutely. And uh, Jim, he Bradley is now an honorary member of the community. He most certainly is, yes. Yeah, yeah. He's a very popular member of our community. Right. And uh, any, any needs that we're having now, he always gets an invite. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ravi's actions during the floods weren't the first time he's helped others in need. He's been travelling the world since 1999 after setting up his own relief team, Kausa Aid. So, Ravi, why did you set that up? Well, the Sikhs are known for the generosity. When you go to a Sikh temple, there's a lot of abundance of food. Um, whatever you need to see, Gurdwara, the temple has four doors, which means anybody from the four corners of the world can come for food, protection, shelter. So why not take that to the four corners of the world where it's needed? And uh, a lot of charities, a lot of organizations in the field, people are losing trust. So what we're saying is, join us. And Jim's been to Bosnia with me to see what we do. He was clearing a lot of um, a shelter for the homeless. And this shelter had three foot of mud in it because they're the poorest of the poor, the homeless. Nobody's helping. Jim and the guys got stuck in, cleared this huge shelter up, made it safer. So yes, it's, it's not only just pride for me, it's pride for our community and supporters yeah. who fund us without judging anyone. Who are we helping? You know, just because we're Sikhs and people might be other Christians, Muslims, Jews, it makes no difference. So we're, I'm very proud of the community who support us. Um, Jim, without Ravi, would you have ever got involved in something like that? No, 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 never. Um, not, for, not for a moment. Please really opened my eyes. I mean, and it, it, like he says, it just feels good. It yeah. Help people, it's good. Well, you've been to almost every international crisis there has been. Tell me, tell me where you've been and what you've done. Uh, last 15 years, first operation was Kosovo, the refugees coming from Kosovo to Albania. And we drove from Slav all the way to uh, on the Albanian Kosovo border. Uh, you know, these are the guys who went with me, never been out of Slav, let alone yeah. go across Europe. Mm -hmm. And that was tough. Somalia, Congo, Pakistan earthquake, Bangladesh, uh, now working in Iraq, it's very, very risky, but it's very rewarding. What makes you want to do it? It's about humanity. The problem is we live in a world that's out of sight, out of mind. Mm. So we don't just deliver aid, we deliver hope, smiles, love, happiness. You know, we get real involved. Gosh, and with all of this relief work that you do, I imagine you don't have much time to yourself, do you, Ravi? I have my pride, which I was talking to Jim about. Really? I have a very cheap, rusty, falling apart old American car. <laughs> Probably worth about a thousand pounds, maybe. <laughs> Apart from that, the family keeps me busy, kids, when I come back. I'm not really, I mean, my time is for others. Yeah. There's so much to do. I've actually been waiting 10 long years time. to restore this precious car. Yeah, long car. time, long time. But you know what? You don't have to wait a moment longer. Thanks to Carl's own warehouse, your old rust bucket is now a little bit of grease lightning. This 1987 Camaro has been sat in Ravi's driveway for the last 10 years waiting to be restored and there's clearly a lot to do. However, he's been too busy devoting his time to his aid work. So we thought we'd give him a bit of a helping hand. So I need to do wheels, brakes, interior, engine and gearbox mountings, roof, windscreen, the list is endless. because surprise surprise your car is arriving at the studios right now shepherd oh driven by our God. very own marvin hughes there it is oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
I was going to take Jim out to dinner. I'm sorry, Jim. I'm about important. I'm about important, mate. Well, I think it's time to hand over the keys to Ravi's newly restored 1987 Camaro. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marvin Hughes. <laughs> Oh, you. Yeah, you too. Pleasure. Hi, Jen. You right? Oh, you're good. Good to see you. Hi, babe. Hello. Mwah. Welcome. Come and take a seat yeah, in between the two chats, if you wouldn't mind. I have got your baby. And what a baby she is. Fantastic car. But we want to know what you've done. Yeah, well, first of all, I think I should give you the keys to start off with and uh, just say it's an honour for me to, to meet you, Ravi. I've heard so much about what you've done and seen so much. We really thought that you deserved this surprise today. Thank so. you. Thank you, so Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. But yeah, what have we done to it? Yeah, okay, so your wife gave me the keys to your car. And we've given it a complete respray, um, custom-made leather interior. There's even there's even a touchscreen DVD player in. I'm jealous. I want this car. <laughs> so much pleasure out that car. Yeah. <laughs> you are. Oh, I can feel a road trip you coming will. on. Oh, what do you think, Ravi? I'm going to take a road trip to Somerset. Yeah. Yeah. I Only if I can come as well. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Ravi, do you know what? Surprise, surprise, because you might be going on a road trip sooner than you think. Have a look at this. Ravi, you and your family will be getting behind the wheel for a once-in-a-lifetime trip down Route 66. Thanks to Hayes and Bob Travel, you'll be going on a two-week driving holiday across America. Oh. So there you go. You thought you were going down the M4. That's amazing. That's one of my dreams. Yeah. And all the you know, the boys in the family, especially my kids, the boys, yeah. they always want to go to America, see all the cars, and this is the the dream. I mean, your um wheels are waiting backstage, and I'm not going to keep you away from them a moment longer. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Marvin, Jim, and Sunny. Don't go anywhere. There are plenty more surprises still to come.